welcome back to my channel uh, today in this video I want to talk about what are the pros and cons you need to know before investing into a low-cost apartment in Malaysia first let me start with the cons of investing into a low-cost apartment investing into a low-cost apartment may not be the cup of tea for everyone as the staff you need to face and handle are quite different from other ordinary properties firstly the surrounding of a low-cost apartment is usually unsightly, less clean, and sometimes it may also reek of smell. So imagine if you are a clean freak person, you may find yourself not suitable to invest into a low-cost apartment. Secondly, the potential tenants you may be facing and handling may be of a different breed. Yes, generally they are not of the regular white collar type, but mostly blue collared tenant. You may need a totally different set of skill in managing such tenants. Filtering to get the right tenant would be very important to help you in, avoid, in avoiding a slew of headache and problems coming from renting out to the wrong tenants in the near future. Of course, you may also say other types of property may also face similar problematic uh, tenants, but trust me, they are of a different breed. Okay, and thirdly, uh, the management body of low-cost apartments are usually less helpful and less responsive as well. And fourth, the neighbors of your low-cost apartment unit play a very important role in determining the performance of your low-cost apartment in terms of rental yield and future selling price. If you have a neighbor from hell, the turnover of your tenant would be very high and you need to lower down your asking rental in order to incentivize new tenants and not easy to get a new buyer if they are aware of the issue of the tenants from hell issue. So uh, what is the telltale sign of a bad neighbor? If you see, they like to clutter their stuff along the corridor and even encroach to your unit's corridor, then there is one of them. And the type of race thing is like This may be sensitive to be revealed over here publicly, but if you are interested to know, you can always PM me. And lastly, you may find out that there may be not many agents who are interested in helping you to rent out your unit due to the low rental amount which means smaller uh, commission fees for the agent. So, sometimes you may wonder why after you have listed your low-cost apartment with agents for rental, yet months have passed by without any potential tenant in sight. This happened to one of my clients before. In the end, I helped her to rent out her low-cost apartment in less than one week. But uh, a note here, I don't usually handle low-cost apartment transaction, but she was referred to me by one of my regular clients, so I was helping her as a kind of returning favor to my regular client. So with all that said, does this mean one should never invest into a low-cost apartment? Not really. If it is split well, there are also plenty of advantages to be reaped which I will share over now. Pros or advantages? Firstly, if this happens to be of the first time you are venturing into the foray of property investing, then you may want to start investing into a low-cost apartment. It will provide you with good learning curve from negotiating to handling the process of buying a property and handling rental property and eventually selling it off A to Z. Personally, I always think it's never a wise choice to invest into higher priced properties when you are still a beginner in property investing. Don't you think so? Secondly, low entry. As the price of most low-cost apartments in comparison to other types of properties in the market. For example, a low-cost apartment subsill are usually priced under RM100,000 whereas other types of properties are usually priced above that. So it will be suitable if you only have limited capital to begin with and only qualify for smaller amount of mortgage loan. For your info, in case if you are not aware, brand new low cost flat is only open to low income Malaysian like those under the B40 category. Others like us, we could only buy subsidy low cost apartment after the lock in period is over. Some project has 5 years lock in period and others have may have 10 years lock in period before it could be sold to the open public in general. As you could see from the chart here, the B40 income varies across different states in Malaysia. In Penang, if you're 
combined household gross income is below RM3588, then you belong to the category of B40. Thirdly, the legal costs, parcel rent, assessment fees are all way lower and cheaper compared to other types of properties. And fourth, since the cash outlay is way smaller, any mistake made on this type of investment, the risk would also be lower in terms of monetary loss versus if you were to make a mistake investing into a higher price property. Fifth, it is easier to rent it out since the asking renter is way more affordable to many potential tenants, especially in Malaysia. And six, it provides you with high rental yield. The rental usually is uh, higher than the mortgage installment amount. This factor is very important in view of the current decreasing rental yield by other types of property in Malaysia. Disclaimer here is provided you bought into the right low cost apartment. And seven, it's way easier to sell off since the selling price is way more affordable to the next buyer compared to if you were to sell a higher end property, especially during bad times. Of course, the list here which I shared are based on my past accumulative experience and they are by no means meant to be exhaustive. And what if after listening to all the pros and cons and you think to yourself, hey, I'm still interested to invest into a low cost apartment, but I'm a clean freak. So is there still a way out? Yes. If you are keen to invest into a low-cost apartment but find it hard to manage it as you are a clean freak person, you still could invest into one provided you could find a good agent who specializes in this field and able to help you to manage the repair, handling tenants and selling it off eventually. If you guys did follow my channel for quite some time, you may have watched one of my videos where I shared how I helped my daughter to invest into a low-cost apartment using her Angpao money. I will put a link up here and down here if you are interested to watch it later. So for my case, I did view the low cost apartment with the agent. I did filter the tenants on my own and the rest of it like uh, for example repairing and fixing job, I leave it to my agent. I will filter those tenants and forward the filtered tenants contact to my agent to let them do the viewing of the unit. I've since uh, sold off this low cost apartment somewhere last year. So uh, this is the end of my sharing today and if you find value in my video, do remember to give me a like and remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell and I will see you in my next video. So before I end as usual, be safe in investing and be aggressive in learning. Bye!